The second part of the lecture is called Meta Model Based Multi Objective Optimization with Finite Element Applications. So let's look at the agenda. So we covered number one, number two, and we saw the applications. And now here I'm going to give you some descriptions of what is a meta model. Then we're going to see meta model based multi objective optimization. And we're going to look at two applications. Well, actually, this application is something new, but Application four is similar to application two. It's the same application, it's the same problem, but instead of running simulations, we use meta model. And you will see the difference between using meta model and running just simulation. So as we said, if you wanna have finite element simulations in your multi-objective optimization, it will be placed here. It is computationally expensive. One method was to automate this whole process but the second method is using meta models. But what is a meta model? So assume that your finite element model or your finite element simulation is something like this. It's very complex and time consuming function. This can be your finite element simulation. This can be a physical experiment. This can be any black box. So finding the value of this function seems very complex and time consuming. So what you wanna do is you wanna replace this complex function with this simple function here. So instead of running this complex function, which takes a lot of time, you wanna approximate this function with a simple function and run this simple function very fast and get your values. So that's why we call it meta model. Meta means model and meta model is model of a model. So this is a model of this model. It is also called surrogate model or response surface. If you, if you look at the literature, you will find these names too. But how do we create a meta model? How do we generate a meta model? How do we generate this simple function? So what we do is we create first a design of experiment. So let's look at one uh, example that you have two variables, and this is the decision space of the two variables. So you create a design of experiment. Here we created nine different design points. These are nine different design points. So each one has a value of variable one and a value of variable two. So you can create design of experiments with several existing methods. Some of them are factorial, Latin hypercube, Hammersley, box banking. So there are several design of experiment methods available and you can select one based on your requirement. So first you create your design of experiment. Then what you do is you run your simulation. You run your finite element simulation. You do your physical experiment or you run any black box simulation. This simulation can be like, uh, it can be a discrete event simulation. Any simulation, any black box software can be used for this. So you run your simulation, you will find the response for each of these design points. So the red dots are the response obtained from running the simulation or running a physical experiment. Then by having these design points and the responses, you can create your response surface or you can create your meta model. So this is the meta model created by using radial basis function so what does this do means instead, so if you want to find the response of this point here in the same space, instead of running the finite element simulation, which take around like, for example, eight hours, or instead of running, going to the lab and running a physical experiment, which takes time, which requires equipment, we can just input these variables into your meta model and you find the responses on this surface. So it's pretty fast, a fraction of a second, you can find your responses. So that's what a meta model is and how you create your meta model. There are several meta model methods available. Some of them are um, such as RBF, radial basis functions, Kriging, support vector regression, uh, neural networks, these are all uh, meta models. So what you do is you create your design experiment, you train your model, you train your meta model function evaluation, then you will create your meta model and you can use your meta model 
later on instead of running simulations. Here one is one uh, example from an industrial uh, case study. It was, it was the same as uh, finding the material parameters and you want to minimize the difference between simulation and experiment. So these are design points and the responses. So I created a meta model on that and here how it looks. So instead of running finite element simulations, I can find the response or the error for any of these, any of the points in decision space by inputting the variables in the function. So here I, I will focus on radial basis function because this was, uh, this was my research area. There are, as I said, there are several other methods. There are methods that combine different methods together. So, but I will focus on this because we have, we have, we have been able to develop a new method that showed better performance, better accuracy compared to the other methods. And this is called radial basis function with a priori uh, bias. So I'm not going to go through these uh, mathematical formulation and equations. It will not be useful for you. Uh, the difference between the traditional method, RBF post, and our proposed method, RBF pre, but probably in this figure, you can see the difference. So uh, here you see the original function. So in this, in the third figure, you see that function, this is a test function, that test function looks like this. So you want to create a meta model that represents this function. If you use the original RBF, you can see the surface created with the original RBF is like this, but with our approach, you can see the approximation surface, the meta model. And by looking at these three, you can see that this is very much more similar to our original function compared to this one. So RBF pre was one of the methods that we proposed. And we did some comparison study and it performed very well compared to other well-known methods. But now we know what is a meta model. We said that it's an approximation function of our actual model, but how are we going to use that in our multi-objective optimization? How are we going to benefit from it? So one very simple and straightforward is that is shown here in this flowchart. So first, you create your DOE design of experiment, you build your meta model, then you have to validate your meta model. That means you have to test your meta model to see how accurate is it. Is it accurate enough? Maybe your meta model looks like this. So it's not accurate enough, it's not similar to this. So if you use this meta model, you're not gonna have accurate uh, results. So you need to validate your meta model. Then when you have your meta model, which is a function, which is a mathematical function, you can use this mathematical function in your optimization. That means instead of running finite element simulations to find the objective value for each, uh, for each uh, solution or for each, uh, each solution in the population, you will run, you will input the variables into your mathematical function and you will get the value very fast. So let's look at the same application that we have done using the simulation-based multi-objective optimization. A turning operation, multi-objective optimization of that, that was related to Volvo cars because we wanted to optimize this, their operation theory process. So we defined this simple case study to test our framework, which was automating this whole process. We had three objectives. The first objectives was uh, very fast. We could get it from a simple equation. But the two, uh, two other objectives, we had to run finite element simulations in V4, and that took a long time. And we had five variables. So how did we use meta models here? So first we create our DOE. So what we did was we create 100 initial design points. So we created 100 set of variables. Then we run 100 simulations on finite, finite element simulations on our deformed, uh, deformed 2D software. We got the values. We got objective two and objective three, which was the wear rate and the temperature from the simulations. So by having these 100 design points and the objective values from the finite element simulation, 
we built some meta models. We built different meta models to test which one is more accurate. So we use RBF pre, RBF pose, Kriging, support vector regression, uh, neural network, and MARS. Then we validated all these models to see which one is performing better, which one gives the lowest error. And for the second objective, which was the word depth, we saw that the RBF pre, our proposed approach, gave us the best results. But for the second, uh, for the third objective, which was the temperature, we saw that Kriging gave us the best results. So for finding the second objective, we used RBF pre, and for the third objective, we used Kriging instead of running simulations. Then we implemented, we implemented the meta model into the multi-objective optimization algorithm, the SPA2 algorithm, and we ran it and we got the results. The same Pareto front. Then we selected some of the solutions from the Pareto front and we again validated them by running the actual simulation to see how accurate are our results or our Pareto front. And here you can see the, uh, the benefits we got it. As I said, simulation-based multi-objective optimization took two weeks. And this two weeks was by using the framework which automated this whole process. So if you wanted to run the simulation-based move without the framework, that would take around two months. We used the framework to automate this whole process, but that still took two weeks. But here we used meta model. We only ran 200 simulations and the study was finished in four days. So instead of two weeks, we ran the study, the same study in four days by using meta models. But let's see the results. Did we get better optimal solutions? So here you can see the results. Uh, you can see the Pareto front from meta model based study in yellow circles and the original from the simulation based studies on in as in blue stars. And we validated some of the points. But if you want to go to conclusion to see how it works, we could find by using meta model base, we could find 31 new non dominated solutions that we couldn't find with simulation based multi objective optimization. 22 of these, two, these solutions were completely new, and nine of these simulations dominated the original solutions. So instead of running 680 finite element simulations in deformed software, we only ran 200 simulations. So we used 70% 7, less computational time, but we found better optimal results. So you see here the benefit of using meta models in performing multi objective optimization in real world engineering problems. So let's look at another example. So this example, this application was on an application on disc brakes. This was also with cooperation with Volvo, but Volvo trucks. So um, the scenario was like this. Um, the driver, driver of the truck uh, is driving on a downhill. Then it will do a hard brake. So it presses hard on the brake. And we wanted to see how is the temperature distribution on the disc and how is the brake energy. So we designed a multi-objective optimization problem by having three variables and three objectives. So what do you want to do is we wanted to maximize the brake energy because that's the energy that stops the truck. We want to minimize the temperature. As you know, having higher temperature will, uh, will have higher wear on your disk and it's, it's not good for the study. And we wanted to minimize the mass of backplate. So what is this backplate and what does this help us? So let's go back here. Or maybe we can go to the next slide. So I'll, I'll talk about this in the next slide. So we had three variables, applied load. We wanted to see how much load uh, will affect on the objectives. The stiffness of the brake pad, that means the material that is used in the brake pad and the thickness of the backplate. But let's look at the back plate. So here you see uh, that's the brake pad. And this thin plate behind it, that's a plate made of, uh, I think it's made of cast iron. So we wanted to minimize the thickness of this plate. 
So how does this help us? If you minimize the thickness, you're gonna use less material. If you use less material, less cost, and you are gonna increase your uh, efficiency in your um, development, product development. So we wanted to minimize the thickness of the mass plate. So we created the MCAT model. Then by running finite element simulation, each finite element simulation took around from one hour. And here you show a schematic diagram of finite, finite element simulations. And we could find uh, two of the objectives by running finite element simulations. But let's look at the results. So in order to find the simulation, in order to find the op optimal solutions, we had to run 10,000 simulations. And 10,000 simulations, each taking one hour, or took around 10,000 hours, and that's 417 days. So that's not practical. So what we did is, we again use meta models. So first, we created a design of experiment, 200 design points. So we ran simulations, 200 simulations on these design points, and we found the objective values from running the simulations. And we used three different separate workstations. So three simulations were running simultaneously. So all 200 simulations took around five days. So now instead, instead of uh, 417 days, by using just simulation-based multi-objective optimization, we could run the study in only five days. So that's, you can see that's a very significant improve. And here you can see the results the Pareto front in objective space found from the study and the, and the Pareto front in variable space. So the conclusions was that by increasing the thickness of the back plate, we could decrease the temperature on the back plate on, on disk. So these are the conflicting. And one interesting findings was that we could reduce the mass of the back plate. So we could reduce the weight of the plate were in 1.4 kilograms by just accepting 30 degrees increase in temperature and 70 degrees in break energy. So that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of price reduction in a uh, lot of reduction in the mass of material and consequently in the price. So that was one of the results that we could find from this study. So here you saw two different applications of using integrating finite element simulations in multi-objective optimization and using meta models to approximate the finite element simulations. 